Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is a video snippet. It's on the numerical solution of ordinary differential equations. I'm going to talk about the standard method, numerical method for solving ordinary differential equations called the forward Euler method. And I want to show you how unreliable this method actually is in practice. Okay, the way I'm going to do this is by giving you one simple example of a problem. And then I'm going to explore solutions computed with Ford Euler. The solutions are going to be generated using some MATLAB software. When you're done watching the video, you can go to my web page and download the software yourself and hopefully generate the same solutions. So let's get going then. Here's the uh, statement of the problem I want to solve. So dy dt is minus 10 into t minus 1 times y. So it's a linear ordinary differential equation. The uh, right hand side is this function here, fty. Okay, here it is. So the starting value is chosen to be e to the minus 5, that's a number close to 0. And with that starting value, the exact solution of this problem can be written down. It's the exponential of e to the minus 5t minus 1 squared. So if you plot this function, it starts here. It grows to a maximum value of 1, when t is 1. And then it decays symmetrically, passes through the same value when t is 2, and then decays slowly to 0. So that's a very important point about the problem. The solution decays to 0, y of t tends to 0, when t tends to infinity. So the further you go along here, the closer y should be to 0. So that's the problem I want to solve. I'm going to solve it using MATLAB. So let's find my MATLAB window. So here's MATLAB. And I'm going to run my demo file. So here it is. It's called Euler Demo. So this is going to run forward Euler on this problem. This is a listing of the forward Euler function. Uh, it's a very simple function. So there's a few comments here but the body of the function is just here. So this is how you do forward Euler. So you generate two vectors, t vec, which stores the time, and y vec. And this just involves computing with the right-hand side function evaluated at the previous time and the previous values of y. So I've set this up so it solves this problem here on the left. So here's the function on the right hand side, you can see that this function here on the right hand side, if I can highlight it here, matches this function here in blue. I'm going to run this function with three different values of the step length. And this is the picture that I get. So let's move this over here so you can see more clearly what's happening. Okay, so we've run it three times. The first time I ran it with a step length of one tenth. So I ran it for 20 steps and generated the red circles. And here's the solution that I generate. You can see it's very inaccurate. The maximum value here at t is 1 should be 1, but it's about 0.45. I can get more accurate results by taking a smaller step length. So in particular, if I run it with a step length of 1 over 40, this generates this cyan picture. Let's look at that. That's Here it is. So that closer to the true solution and I can get an even more accurate answer by taking step length of 1 over 160. Here's the blue curves here so there are now 320 dots between 0 and 2. But even then we're not close to getting the maximum value of 1. If I push it a bit further run it with a step length of 160 this generates a reference solution here it is. This is pretty close visually at least, to the exact solution. And now we're getting pretty close to 1. So the first thing to see here is that forward Euler isn't a particularly accurate method. It turns out that's not the big problem with forward Euler. The problem with forward Euler is one of instability. That's what I want to explore next. I'm now going to run forward Euler with a step length of 1 tenth, but this time run it for a longer time. I'm going to take 78 steps of 1 tenth to run it to 7.8 time units. And here's the previous pictures. They've just been plotted on top of each other. Here's the red picture, the one I've just generated. 
just running this for a longer time and there's a big problem here so at a time around eight seconds forward oiler just explodes remember the true solution just should go to zero the forward oiler is behaving very erratically and diverges and uh, the computation breaks down so you cannot use forward oiler to solve this problem unfortunately so if you want to solve this problem accurately you have to use an implicit integrator I'm just going to show you what happens here this is the MATLAB OD23 implicit in integrator this is very sophisticated uh, and uh, there's no sign of instability here these magenta dots are staying close to zero uh, the implicit integrator is also very accurate compared to the forward Euler let's have a look at the solution here if I just zoom into it here just to get a better picture you can see that we're generating the same solution with the MATLAB ODE integrator with very few points it's remarkably accurate I think that's the end of the demo so uh, if I go back to um, find a picture of me which should be somewhere around here and I get rid of him then uh, well is this example special? no it's not the issue of instability of forward Euler is generic. There's a class of OD problems in the literature. They're called stiff problems, for which explicit methods like forward Euler are problematic. When solving such a problem, you have to use implicit methods. Bad news is stiffness is everywhere. Time to cut out the Viagra.